Memory is a tricky thing, which is probably one of the few reasons why we haven't seen a ton of movies surrounding the exploration of the mind, especially in things like memory, which can obviously be foggy and fluid and hard to elaborate in a much more tangible medium such as film. However, any time a movie dips its toes into those challenging waters, I find myself really enjoying the outcome. Inception is probably the first one that'll come to mind, but even films like Minority Report did something similar, just with images of the future rather than the past. And the TV show Fringe? That did something remarkably similar in terms of connecting water and electricity to produce memories, as they did in Reminiscence, a film that I've had in my back burner for a few months now but I've finally gotten around to watching it. So, how was it? Well, let's get cracking. Nick Bannister, a private investigator of the mind, navigates the alluring world of the past when his life is changed by a new client, May. A simple case becomes an obsession after she disappears, and he fights to learn the truth about her. But, as he soon comes to learn the hard way around, sometimes you gotta be careful what you wish for. The best way that I could put my thoughts into words with this film is to simply say that there's things that I absolutely loved about this movie, as well as a number of things that I just didn't care for. For simplicity's sake, I'll start with negative, since for me it was a bit of an elephant in the room situation. I'm known to not really care that much for noir films, with expansive, dreary, or even sleepy narration, which is exactly what Reminiscence is. It's kind of a mystery film at the end of the day, which I do love, but again, it's a neo-noir mystery, so a lot of it tends to feel overdramatic. Now, I love the story here. I was engaged with the mystery surrounding this woman and all these different secrets that she has, but never once did it need to be a 50s noir thing. And the only thing that separates this from those types of movies is, you know, graphics and color. This film has a lot of great visuals in terms of showcasing a city landscape half buried in water, which is beautiful. Great world building there and putting us into a state where we can actually believe that what we're seeing is indeed the future. No need for flying cars or silver business suits, but I think we've all kind of come to appreciate a decrepit future where we have kind of ruined our own world, so to speak. To see Miami flooded and to see how the people cope with that travesty, it's all kind of believable. The performances by everybody, especially Hugh Jackman and Rebecca Ferguson, who co-starred in The Greatest Showman, by the way, are all very good. Again, sometimes I feel like the dramatizations of these lines are over the top, which is in line with a neo-noir film. If that's the kind of movie that you enjoy watching, I definitely think that you should give this film a try because it's one of the best noir films that I feel like I've ever seen, or at least that I've ever enjoyed. The concept of traversing through different people's memories and how they kind of connect, that was all alluring, and overall, it's done well. I do think that they could have gotten a little crazier with it, though, a little bit more ambitious than what they did, but maybe that's just the Inception fan in me talking. For what they did, though, it was not bad. I was not a huge fan of the payoff, though. I won't say anything else regarding that, because I don't want to spoil you too much, but at the same time, because I'm not a fan of noir films, it might depend on who you are, on if you'll enjoy that payoff or not. I'm not entirely sure, so take that with a grain of salt. Overall, though, I enjoyed this film. It's not Hugh Jackman's absolute best role, but at this point in my life, I'll watch him in basically anything because he's a, such a well-versed actor. He's been in action films, superhero films, musicals, romance films, comedies, romantic comedies, the list goes on. He's not just one note, and that's one thing that I definitely respect about him. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at my final score for a second. From a tactical or unbiased perspective, I definitely thought a lot of the work put into the visuals looked stunning. And in general, the world building of this flooded Miami was very cool, as was the direction that the film took in terms of taking the viewers through a multitude of different memories and how they all connect. I thought performances were all pretty decent, and the concept was smart enough to keep any viewer engaged. This score is 78%. How about how I personally felt about the movie or my bias score? Again, very similar. I enjoyed the movie. I just, I personally think that it would have been a lot better if they didn't take the sleepy noir approach. That might work for you, and if so, great. I won't fault you for it. Other than that, though, it is a solid film. Interesting direction, uh, some slower moments that weren't as good, but as an overall, I'm not against watching it again. This score is 76%, meaning that when we combine those two scores together, we come to the final rating of 77%. 77 out of 100 possible stars. So guys, have you seen Reminiscence? 
If you have, I want to hear your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. As for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out! Dave examines movies. We just watch for fun. Davey is the expert. He is the number.